to deal with some personnel issues, so we have already called the meeting to order. Um, we are in open session now, and the first thing is to approve our minutes from our regular board meeting in um, September, as well as a superintendent search meeting that we had in September. So moved. Second. Any questions on any of those minutes or discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Thank you. Um, I next will look for approval of the agenda, but we are going to make a change. Yeah, we're going to move up the update on the middle school design and budget item 11A1 up to the top of our agenda after we do the reports at the beginning. Okay. So I need approval of the uh, so agenda with that, with that change. Second. So move with the uh, changes recommended. So Jack and second by Ted. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, I have not received any public comments or sheets to speak. So moving on to our reports. Starting with our students. Exciting week at school this week. Come on up. Victoria and Kendall, and tell us about the week. So it's a pretty busy week since it's homecoming, so there's a lot going on at the high school. Um, yesterday we had our annual seniors versus juniors dodgeball game. Um, we actually won this year, which is surprising. <laughs> um, so that's good. And then uh, as far as homecoming, we have themes this week. So today was Adam Sandler Day. <laughs> um, and then there's also 80s day, Jersey day, and then um, twin day, and then class color day on Friday. Um, and then uh, also on Friday, we have a school speaker and a pep rally. Um, and then the pep rally, we'll have those minutes when the games where the grades can compete. And we and Kendall are the family feud representative, <laughs> so <laughs> wish us luck with that. Um, and then also for homecoming, every week we do a, or a penny war which is where we raise money for a cause. This year's cause is More Smiles, um, which is actually um, a place I work at. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that delivers care for those who don't have dental insurance. Um, so this week, the school will be raising money for that. Um, and then I'm sure most of you have heard of Relay for Life. It's the club that puts on the student versus staff basketball game um, to raise money for breast cancer. Um, and so, I mean, this club kind of lost traction after last year, um, and I kind of didn't see it at the club or fair, so I talked to Ms. Combin, the leader of the club, I guess, and we're going to start the club back up um, this year, continue the student staff basketball game, and then maybe add a student staff volleyball game as well in order for more funding. Um, and then, as far as athletics go, tennis and golf girls are at state this week, and football and volleyball both secured conference champs as well. And that's all we have today. That is a lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, it's a busy week. Exciting week, so yeah. it's a lot. Um, any comments or questions for the girls? Thank you very much for coming and attending and uh, letting us know what's going on. It's always great to hear from you. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank Thanks, you. ladies. Um, next, we have a teacher report for Molly. Do you want to yes. come up and join us? Good evening, everybody. Thank you, as always, for the opportunity for us to share out from the WTA. Um, I just want to acknowledge Indigenous Peoples Day, um, and in tandem with that, um, just express a lot of gratitude and give a shout out to our school social workers for all of the information about educational tools that they provide for occasions such as this, as well as other um, DEI-related initiatives like Hispanic Heritage Month, Month and things of that nature. So um, just an acknowledgement and some gratitude there. Um, the WTA also wanted to thank um, the board uh, for the opportunity to do a focus group with the superintendent search team. Um, we felt that it was very productive. We appreciated the opportunity to voice our concerns and hopes for the future. Um, and I also think, just generally speaking, all of the you know public input meetings and focus groups that allowed community members, parents, students all to participate was very valuable and I think very appreciated by, by everyone who um, was engaged in that process, so thank you very much. 
Um, just a quick note, uh, you know, we, we like to start with celebrations and then move into concerns. Um, the only thing that we had heard from staff uh, members and non-members alike was that the power schools rollout was a little clumsy at the beginning of this year with just having a new platform not maybe as thoroughly explained as it could have been. Um, and just even what, for... Excuse me, what, is, what was that? Power schools, it's a new platform where we sign documents like reviewing the handbook and completing in-service trainings and confirmations. Um, in fact, we a lot of us thought it was like a spam test, and so it took a little while for us with constant reminders to get going on it. New and, and, and uh, seasoned educators alike, I think, just felt a little overwhelmed and maybe some time pressure with having to review the handbook and the in-service materials by a, a, a quick deadline after we felt like we received the, this new roll-up of the program. Um, but other than that, um, again, just thank you for letting us share out and speak. I'm grateful for upcoming opportunities with the insurance committee, the handbook committee, um, and uh, oh, gratitude also for the uh, new DEI staff steering committee. Committee, I think we're all excited about that and just hopeful that um, we get some really interested and engaged educators involved. So yeah, looking forward to that, to the role of that. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you, Molly. Um, before we bring up our guest, um, let's do any board report out. Anybody attend anything that you would like to share with the board? If not, we will skip to the latter part of our written agenda to our update on the new middle school design and budget. All right, we have Robin and Mike tonight here from EUA and Jay from Vogel, so those guys can all come up. We have two presentations we're going to present this evening, and these are pretty exciting because there's been a great body of work and input that have gone into this. Um, the first one is going to be just talking about that, the new design, and what that, how the layout of the new middle school will look. We'll also be talking from Jay's perspective on just an update on some of the budget things that you've seen in a similar format in the past. So. We're excited to share with you the work that's gone into the new middle, middle school. That will be um, starting next summer. Allie has the uh, clicker and the mouse, I think, for the PowerPoint, or the PDF, you'll need to use the mouse. I just have to roll through it by Can you make it a little larger? On the bottom, I think. It, that's... It's the bottom of my class. We're fighting Thank you. Sorry, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Schwenenhammer. I am a senior design architect with the EUA, and I'm lucky enough to be the uh, lead designer on this project. I'm very excited about that. Um, I know it's been, I think, May, I know you've had other updates on the Heritage School and other projects at Wanakee. I think it's been May since we gave an update on this, so. Um, thanks to the core team, the visioning team, and the staff, and even the students too. Um, we've made a lot of progress since then. Um, so tonight I want to take, that, take you through that. First talk a little bit about, <clears throat> remind you of some of the things that you probably saw in May um, that leading to where we are today. Give you an update on the floor plan, show you where we are with that. It's gotten a lot more detailed um, than the last time you saw it. Look at the site plan and then um, take a look at the exterior of the building, which, well, I guess you guys have seen the board package, so you've, you've seen a little bit of that, but we'll walk you through um, what, what we're looking at with that. So, um, as, as you know, we, we have three different phases within the um, design process. That's the schematic design, design development, and construction documents. Then after construction documents, we go into building construction. Schematic design is really the time where we try to figure out high level ideas of what the project is. Um, doing a lot of the planning and programming, um, getting to understand what the school needs to be, and then we, and where we are now today is in design development. That's where we take that design and start refining it more. Start figuring out things, um, going from schematic design where we're asking questions like, what do you teach in your art classrooms? What, how many art classrooms do you need? To asking questions in design development, where do you want your marker board? You know, where do you want outlets? How many outlets do you need? So we're getting much more detailed in this phase. Um, we're also working more with 
our consultants um, bringing in information about structure, mechanical, electrical systems, um, doing much more code research, incorporating that into the design. Um, and then also after the schematic design with the package that we put together with that, Vogel, our construction management partner, uh, was able to do a price estimate, so, or a costing estimate. So we're able to then look at and design development managing the values of what we're adding into the project and whatnot, just to make sure that we stay within budget. At the end of the design development phase, that's when we'll do another uh, cost estimate. Um, construction documents, that's when really we try to be just heads down uh, documenting the design. Hopefully all the design decisions have been made. Um, we've had multiple times to talk with your staff, but during construction documents we're just drawing and co coordinating all of that. Um, of course, we do, we've talked to the court team, we've reserved the right to go back and ask questions of teachers if we need to. So, <clears throat> we design a lot of schools, and one of the questions we often get is, how do, how do, how do we do that? Uh, because every school district we work with, they're a little different. Even within school districts, schools can be different how they handle special education, how they want to handle art. Um, so just to give you a little idea, I, Robin and I were talking the other day trying to count up some of these things, and frankly, Robin told me, stop, there's too many of them. Just <laughs> <laughs> so we'll give you a big idea. Core team meetings, we've been meeting every two weeks. I think that every, oh yeah, geez, yeah, that's right, it's every, sorry. Every week we've been meeting since November uh, last year after it passed. Uh, mm -hmm. um, visioning team we met with, the visioning team was made up of um, superintendent, principal for the middle school, curriculum director, and then 10 current middle school teachers. Um, we met with them four times, I believe, plus we did a tour of three different middle schools um, to kind of give them some idea of what's happening in other schools around the state. Um, Multiple, and this is where we're multiple rounds of stakeholder meetings where we're getting in and talking to the art department, the English department, what, what they want um, within their spaces. Um, we also did student engagement, um, which was a great opportunity. One, we emailed out a survey to all the students. Uh, Jeff Keen is the principal. We helped him put together the survey and he emailed it out. We had over 500 students respond to that. Um, got some great information from that. One, lockers are too small right now, and they want more natural light. Um, we also had several meetings where we had groups of students come in, um, meet with us, and we were able to ask them questions more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then we had, uh, that same day, we, for the three lunch periods, we sat out outside the cafeteria, and students, as they came and went, were able to just stop and tell us what they liked and didn't like about the school. So got a lot of interesting feedback from them on that, um, which is great, because again, we're designing the school for Wanakee. We're designing this school for the kids um, that are going there. Um, and then Robin knows more of this, because she's done more of them, the meetings with the village. With the village. Uh, a lot of conversations about what we can do, can't do. Uh, and then meetings internally, uh, meetings with our consultants, that would be our civil, structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineers, meetings with uh, Jay and Vogel um, to talk, talk about what's the best for the school. Um, and I believe you've seen this. Uh, this is the guiding principles. This is, some, this is a list of <clears throat> ideas that we came about with the visioning team, working through their ideas. We just kind of put it into words and um, kind of went back and forth with them wordsmithing. This the guiding principles really talk about what the school should be and how the school should run. Um, and some of the things that the visioning team thought was most important to their school. Um, this is something that we go back and look at occasionally. And as we're making decisions of why to do certain things within the school and why certain things, you know, if we come to a cost decision, you know, what stays and what doesn't, we can use this as a progress check. And this is, <clears throat> I know in May you saw an even rougher version of this planning diagram. This was something that we worked through with the visioning team. We had multiple options. This is the one that we ended up with. Um, I think it was great working with your your staff and your teachers because 
they really got into it. Um, they really looked at the different components of the building and how they were going to go together and who should be located um, where. And if you look at this example here, um, I'm sorry, I wanted to find there was three different things that we looked at. Um, three, three large concepts that we looked at was equ equitable entry for students uh, at the bus and parent drop-offs. Um, Encore and specials located close to the LCs, SLCs, the small learning communities, but outside of them. And then also the ability to close off portions of the school at nights and weekends. So that is, <clears throat> you can see in this diagram, specials are located here across from the SLCs. We did have a discussion with them and we moved music um, to the north end of the building. By the way, on all these diagrams, north is going to be to the left. Um, the idea of putting music down here was just because of the noise, I'm um, sorry, the sound uh, coming from music. Beautiful noise. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and also access for music to go directly out to this parking lot that you'll see in the site plan. So they have easy loading um, for buses there for their equipment. Um, but the idea here is that we could set, close off this the south section of the building on nights and weekends, and it's just easier to con contain where the public is going. But one of the things I wanted to point out on this is where the admin is located. And this kind of shows the involvement of your teachers with this process. Um, we had a, this is a fairly good discussion about whether admin should go here or go here. And the big part of it was their perception for the students of whether the admin was separate or whether they were part of the school itself. Like they wanted to make it seem, and, for the reception to be that the admin's close to the small learning communities, it's close to the specials, it's close to where the students are the majority of the time. So the admin, the front office, if students need to go in and talk to somebody, and this is the same with the student services that's located on the second floor, that they're located close to there so that students can have that access. So I, I really appreciate the involvement and the engagement of the uh, visioning team to think about it that way as opposed to just saying, okay, architect, we like what you said, just move on. Um, this is, we'll go through the floor plans. I know you saw these in May. Um, a lot of work has been done since then and it's still happening. Um, at the time you kind of saw the big picture of what was happening with the floor plans. Um, I'm not going to get into all the detailed spaces where all the mechanical closets are and all the SGIs, but give you the big idea. Um, again, north is located to the left over here and South Street is located here. So the idea that all students, will, whether they're being dropped off by their parents, whether they're walking to school, whether they're getting dropped off by the bus, or whether they're riding their bike, they'll have this equitable entry where they both come in, they all come into this commons cafeteria area in the center of the school. Um, we think it's important that just to start the day off right, um, don't have, uh, you know, Years ago, students coming from bus might just get basically going through the back door. And it just, kids don't want to ride the bus. They're going in, it feels a little secondary. Um, so on the north end of the building, we have uh, athletics and phi ed located here. Obviously, the three-station gymnasium, fitness, and weightlift, or uh, wrestling. Uh, and then the locker rooms for those students and uh, coaches and uh, teachers' offices located here. We also have on the north end of the building, on the first floor, cafeteria's kitchen, and then some back of house space. This would be receiving, maintenance located there. Keeping that, this receiving and maintenance separate from the rest of the school. Um, it's, it's just a, a nice way to kind of keep it isolated, what's happening over there. This dark gray, the gray area that you're seeing here, um, because there's a 12 foot difference in the slope of the site from the high end to the low end. Um, this is basically, this area of the gymnasium is buried into that, into that slope of the hill there. Uh, moving to the south. I have a quick question. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no problem. Um, this is just something that has come up. Can you, it's hard to tell scale for, yeah. the, for, the, for the training room in the gym. And we have a big strength and conditioning program yeah. in middle school. It's growing. What is that size compared to you know what we currently have? Is that large? Is that larger? Is, yes. Is, I'm sorry. <coughs> it's 
Yeah, yeah, it's quite a bit larger. Kid. Okay. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a lot larger than what you have at the so, current. To school. accommodate our growing yeah. program. Okay. Yeah, I just sorry, wanted to make sure. Up. It's just hard to, you know, I just yeah. didn't know what scale. But. So, see these two small rectangles here? Mm-hmm. You can see those? Yes. Those are two 10 uh, foot wide garage doors. Okay. So, to give you a little bit of a sense of the scale. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we can get you get you that number. If you look at it with, if you see it on your site, you can look at uh, in the commons. You can see there's some furniture in there that'll help you okay. understand that. Thank you. But yeah, and after the DB, you'll get some more information. After the design development submittal, you'll get to see where some of that equipment is. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, on the south side of the building, as you go down there, like I said, there's the front. There's the front office adjacent to the main entry to the school. We have the family consumer sciences. Uh, the Lemtech, the library, and business classrooms that are along that west edge of the building. And then at the south end of this corridor, there's Tech Ed. There's the Tech Ed classrooms and lab spaces, Ag classroom and lab. And then we have two SLCs on the first floor. There's a total of four SLCs for the building, the small learning communities, um, two for seventh grade, two for eighth grade. Each SLC will have six classrooms, and those classrooms are pretty much identical classrooms. So it gives a lot of flexibility of how they get used. But there's two English, two math, and two uh, social studies. There's also then two la- uh, science labs in each SLC. Um, the SLCs, I'll show you this one here, there's collaboration space in the middle here, um, lockers, there's a teacher's resource room in each one, and then there's also two uh, single-user toilet rooms. One of the things that we've done with the SLCs, all all four of the SLCs, is they're accessed from this main corridor. There's two sets of doors that go in, but with the majority of the time of the day being spent in the SLC, because of the number of classes that they have in there, the lockers, the toilet rooms, they have easy access. So in the middle of the class, if a student says, I forgot this in my locker, their locker is going to be located right there, so they can easily get to it. There's good visibility from the other classes. Um, you don't have to worry about a student leaving the SLC and going down the hall. Same thing if they need to uh, use the toilet room. It's right there within that space. There are larger toilet rooms outside of it for use during passing periods, but during class we're trying to keep them more within that area. Um, in between the two SLCs is special education. Um, in, one thing that I want to point out here is we've angled this wall, these classes here, angled them in a little bit, was able to save some square footage in that collaboration space, work, which worked well. And then with this SLC, which is just a mirror version of this, rotated slightly, the reason we did that was to open up this space in between those two wings. Uh, gives us some space for nice outdoor learning environments uh, spaces, uh, but also gives us some more distance between those classrooms and be able to bring in a little bit more natural light into the classrooms here and into the special education classroom. So if those were completely orthogonal, it'd it'd feel tighter. Uh, Moving up to the second floor, uh, one of the things that we tried to do with the building, uh, give it a simple layout, uh, but instead of just giving it one long corridor that almost get a bit of highway hypnosis, you know, walking up and down it. We put a couple angles in it, um, breaking those into smaller segments, um, but then also putting uh, key points along the way so there's some interest. Kids can look look ahead and see something of interest and be drawn uh, to that. Helps with wayfinding, and like I said, it just gives them interest. Um, so again, working starting with the north end of the building, we have the music department located here. There is, because this, even though it's the second floor because of the height difference on the, on the site, there is an entry here on the north end of the building. Um, so this is a direct entry that teachers will be able to use um, for the parking lot that's there. And like I said, the music department will be able to come in and out there bringing in equipment. Um, this is the double height space of the gym, so there's no access on this floor. A couple health classrooms. The commons is also a double height space, and then there's a bridge that connects the north and south side. Uh, moving down the west side here, we have the student services, world languages, uh, the double height library space, and then we have three art classrooms. Three art classrooms at the end of the corridor. Um, they are connected internally so teachers can, and students can go back and forth through there. Um, we also, at the end of this corridor, we're able to <coughs> open it up, bring 
get some glazing there on the second floor so there's views out. Um, get, bring some natural light into that space, but also being able, being able to create uh, a small outdoor terrace there. So art students can go out there, um, be able to do some sun uh, shadow studies and other, other art projects outside. Um, there's also a small amount of green roof, uh, green roof trays in this area, and potentially we're trying to get some photovoltaic uh, in this area too. So it's right next to the art department. They can send students out there, but also science. Other departments can bring students up there, show them what uh, a green system tray, a green tray system is. Show them what photo photo photovoltaics. Solar panels, yeah. <laughs> Um, where you see X's, those are floor openings um, or double height spaces. So this is open to the library below. We have some floor openings here. And there's some clear stories above that to bring natural light into the space. That was a big thing that we heard from the students is just wanting more windows and more natural light into the space. How do you uh, go up and down? Is that a stairways at the end? Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to <clears throat> give students flexibility um, for how they want to circulate through the school, give them enough opportunities, but keep it open so that there's good visibility to that. Um, circulation for the school going um, first floor, second floor, there's the main primary stair here, at the, or the mm -hmm. more of a monument stair going through here. There's an elevator located here, and then there's a stair here and here, and one located here in the middle that mm -hmm. students will use typically to get from first floor to second floor in between classes. At the ends of the SLCs, there are two stairs located there, uh, but those are gonna primarily be used for uh, egress purposes. Um, depending on how the school actually gets laid out as far as whether we go seventh, seventh grade, two seventh grade stacked, or whether we do seventh grade on the first floor, it can make a little bit of difference on that. Uh, we had some conversations about the possibility if you stacked 7th grade here and 8th grade here, or vice versa, that you could have the ability for 7th grade to kind of mix between the two floors. Um, there also is a stair down here um, and here that we're looking at those as being more egress purposes and not having, especially this one to the north, not having student access to those unless it is an emergency. And I'm sorry, there's also an elevator here. Yep. Will there be any unused rooms to begin this uh, the, once it opens up? Yeah, I think right now you're at about 670 students, and this is um, designed for 900 students. So yeah, there's 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 room for growth there. And that su southern corridor there are those openings? These two here, yes. So that's where I mentioned there's a clear story on the second floor, bring natural light into this area here, but then also down into that first floor. Um, with the tech ed and ag here, there's a small collaboration space out here that they can, as they're working on different um, experiments, projects, they can bring them out there. They can also send students out there. Uh, a lot of the project-based learning, the idea of like sending students out and being able to work in a group and talk through ideas um, in different spaces works well. And we just didn't want it to feel like you're in the basement. You know, so try to bring some natural light into that space. Um, site plan. So again, north is to the left. This is South Street. Uh, this is the existing track and practice field here. The, I'm gonna, uh, we're kind of worried, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more here. You can see. Um, Two main entries to the building, west entry, east entry here. The west entry is going to be used for the parent drop-off. Um, there's a parking lot out front here, about 94 parking spaces, and queuing for drop-off and pickup be located here on this loop road. We <coughs> rotated the build or rotated the building so it's going north-south, uh, but compared to the existing heritage school that's there, we shifted this portion of the building east, uh, which allows us to get this parking lot and this drop-off 
on the west side of the building, but also get that uh, entry to the building more centrally located so that it's not pushed all the way to one end, which really helps with the admin in the front office being able to get more accessible to uh, feel, feel like they're more part of the school. Um, so that's parent drop-off coming through here. Um, bus drop-off comes in from the north, comes down, and there's room for nine buses to queue here. And then as they leave, they'll go back out uh, to the south. Um, we will have service. We'll be able to come in here. We'll be down at this section. There will be a gate here so that um, service vehicles will not be able to get to the rest of the site. Any questions on the site? Is that teacher parking on the north? Line? Yeah, so this will be, so teacher parking, um, usually we'll put like 15 spaces marked as visitor parking, mm -hmm. but teacher parking located here uh, to the west, and then there's 72, I believe 72 parking spaces just in this area, not counting this line of parking. Here. Yeah, it's neighbors. Um, so there's about 72 parking spaces here. So. Teachers can come in from the north, from this main entry here. And we also have a kind of a secondary entry down here um, that some teachers can use too if they're parking at this end. So these compliments on the design for the park and that is really uh, parent friendly for events at school, community friendly for events at school, uh, multiple areas but easy access, so very nicely done. Mm -hmm. And off South Street, which is nice, back or something. Yeah. What's that building uh, on the north side that looks like uh, our parking lot doesn't overlay the roof? St. John's. St. John's. It's because St. John's. It doesn't technically. Yeah. It's a little bit of a. I think that's a little bit of the uh, aerial map, just the way it's. Uh, it, yeah, it's not. It's definitely not going over that. It might be a bit of a scale issue. Will we share and, with them? I mean, do we kind of share yeah. now? On the north side, that's an alley, public alleyway, and then parking, the line of parking to the north is actually St. John's Park. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. That, that's a shared so this, drive there. Yeah, so this okay. is shared coming in up to, up to this point, right? Yeah, but then they have a gate, I believe, there that gets into their space if they need access to their So that's... So the fields in the back, I mean, there's kind of parking back there now. When they're, they're utilized back there, is there... That can be parking where the big gray area is for on the east there, yeah. So this area here, um, like I said, is bus drop off. Yeah. Um, we did it as asphalt so that it's, it's used as a playground during lunch hour, but it's instead of doing, we had it more of a angled uh, design before with more concrete, but we changed it to asphalt so that we can do overflow parking here. So this could be a parking lot for those spaces. Yeah, just not knowing how that space, I guess, is going to be used back there. I'm assuming there's going to be a fence. So. Yeah. Similar to like when you go to the intermediate school and when Tim opens up the gate, you can go all the way around to the back and come in the other way. Similar type concept. And at the moment, those are going to remain practice fields. So there aren't any large games there. But, right. But yeah, practice. Yeah. Um, now just kind of tilting up a bit on the model and looking at the building it, itself. Um, starting off here on the west side, this is the gym box that we talked about. Uh, the main entry to the school, main entry to the school, the admin front office area. This is the limb tech and then down here the uh, tech ed with art above it. And just give you an idea. Um, computer doesn't always render out in the model exactly what the image is. So we've got some photos of the materials that we're going to use, and we have materials here. If anybody wants to take a look at that, this is the um, brick. This is the field brick. So this is the majority of the building is this red brick. Um, it has a, a range of color to it, so it's not all one solid color. It gives it a little bit more depth and character to it. And then this is a darker brick that you'll see in the next slide, um, the vertical bands in the building that kind of break up, uh, break up the scale of the project. That's that. Uh, and then the silver that you see, this is, this is a silver metal panel, um, which we have as both a flat metal panel 
and then there's also a uh, vertical profile that's a, a ribbed uh, pattern to it. This will not be this color, it will be the same metal color. It, it, it does a nice job of giving, a little, again, a little bit more texture and detail to the project. Um, we also have the last two uh, images there is a pewter brick, it's just the color of it, and then also a cast stone. And we have a, those in a couple areas of using those as an accent color. Um, again, it's a small amount, but it gives a little bit more warmth and detail to the project. Um, one thing that I didn't point out um, when we were looking at the site plan and, the, and this view here, uh, another reason why, one, that we're using two different materials, um, or main materials, the brick and the metal panel, and the reason why we shifted the building is because of the, the residential, that uh, single family residential that you have across the street. Uh, we looked at the idea of this being this long building um, along South Street that we wanted to have some presence there, so we've got the, the gym box there, but then pushing the building back gives a little bit more breathing room to the residential that's there. And then also using the combination of the brick and then the metal panel, brick metal panel. And we're using the metal panel to help identify different uses, programming uses on the inside of the building. We're also using it to break up the scale of the project overall. So make it feel, it's, it's, it's a school, it's 230,000 square feet, but making it fit more within the community. So here is a picture of that main entry to the school. Um, with, we're using the metal panel, um, a canopy located here with some signage, uh, bringing that uh, attention to that main entry in between these two brick volumes. Um, the idea here with the commons in that cafeteria right behind there, you can see the stair going up. The idea there of bringing lots of natural light into that space and creating a uh, really a welcoming, inviting space to the students, a place where students want to go. Um, we've also, with that front office where the principals um, is going to be located, tying that into this space too to kind of give it that, that welcoming feeling too. And it's um, basically from here, if you turn your head right a little bit, then you start to see where the brick is. Um, and then this is the, the limb tech here. And you can see. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see a little bit closer. The difference between the light, light red brick and the darker brick, it's being used um, above. The darker red br brick is being used above and below the, the windows going into the classroom. Um, you can see it's a little bit breaking up that pattern, um, breaking up the scale, trying to use those vertical lines to break up that, the, the long feel, that long horizontal feel of the school. And then this is the view, aerial view from the south. Like I said, we've got about 2,000 square feet of green roof trays. Um, this is the tech ed and ag classrooms. The footprint is a little bit larger than what we have on the second floor, so we have some ability to put some green roof there and the solar panels. And this is that, um, that outdoor terrace. And then you can see the two clear stories. So they're just clear stories just pop up with windows on all four sides, bringing some natural light into those spaces. So Randy, we've been uh, talking about uh, solar. Is that more on the elementary school? Yeah, what you've been talking about thus far and what's on our agenda tonight is, is the solar for heritage. We'll have a very similar conversation about this. This is the view, uh, aerial view of the east side. So you can see the two SLCs here, special education located in between, it's kind of the center of the building. Um, moving this, moving North, this is that bus drop-off, um, kitchen and maintenance and locker rooms on the first floor in brick. Excuse me, and then the music department uh, clad with the metal panel on the second floor. This is that bus entry. Uh, like I said, we wanted to make sure that students going in this entry did not feel like they were going in the back of the house. Uh, we also didn't want to just copy it exactly what was happening on the first on the the West Entry. Um, this, so this will be used for students going in um, in the morning from the buses, but it'll also be um, with the cafeteria right there. This will be students coming out uh, at lunch hour for the playgrounds, uh, be able to go out there and sit. There, one of the things that we talked about 
Um, you can see this area back here, we're going to be looking to put some tables, some benches. Students want to be able to go outside during lunch, uh, but they don't necessarily want to play kickball or softball. They want to also be able to just go out there and sit and hang out, but they don't want to sit on the curb. So we're looking to put some, uh, a nice little plaza area out there. We had some conversations with Jeff about students being able to eat out there, and he's, he liked the idea. It's probably more of a management issue to see how kids deal with it. Um, we did talk about the north entry. Um, we've, we had a lot of conversations about this during the core team meetings with staff coming in there. We wanted to give them an appropriate uh, entry. Um, also, this north parking lot could be used for nights and weekends uh, for the public coming in there. Um, but it's definitely a secondary entry to what's happening at the main entry. We don't want anybody driving to the school for the first time seeing a giant sign, a giant canopy, and thinking, oh, this must be the entry to the school and driving there. We want to make sure that people are driving more uh, to the main entry. Um, so in this view here, you can see the music department over here on the left side. This is the north entry that we just talked about. Uh, and then you can see the gym box, which is a double height space. It's about approximately 30 two, three, four feet tall, uh, but it's, it appears as a single story space here, and then it starts to step down as you, and it'll eventually be two story exposed once you get around to that side. Again, it's trying to um, be responsive to the neighborhood um, and not put a giant 34 foot box right up against. The so is there like two steps into that ent entrance? Is that what I'm seeing? No, so what you're seeing, with this model right now, okay. um, yes, that appears as a step, but it's just the way we're doing the contours. Oh. Uh, it's just we pull them up in one foot intervals um, instead of doing as a smooth plane. Okay. It's yeah, quite frankly, it's a quick and dirty way for me to do it. <laughs> it's so an the, easier way to do it. So there will be steps, or there no. won't be. There no. won't be. Okay. No. It'll, okay. This will be. This will be smooth. Uh, okay. All the entries cool. to the school have direct access and no step, no ramp needed. Um, another thing that we looked at with the core team or what we talked about is that this is a school, um, I think you're at approximately 670 students in the middle school right now. This school is designed for 900 students, the capacity, um, but we also talked about how could it grow in the future. So the library, the gym, um, commons, they're designed to accommodate more students in the future. Um, but we did look at the possibility, and this is just a massing, there would, there would be some windows in it, um, how you could raise that to a thousand students uh, if you needed to in the future. And this would be by basically designing uh, two floors here uh, with some more classroom spaces. Um, and now, so that's, if there's any, any questions on the exterior? Um, Robin and Jay are going to talk you through what's coming next. Yeah, so our design development phase ends um, the first week of November. That's when we send the drawings over to Jay and his team to get another pricing update. Um, and so that's when, you know, hopefully we've gathered all the information we need. Um, we still can go back if we need to, but then we really sort of move into creating the construction document. So it's really about detailing out the windows, detailing out all the different components of the building so that Jay and his team have some documents they need to really construct it. Um, so that's what we're doing in the next four months. Should we talk Before about it? Jay? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's too soon in the process to ask a question, but I know when Verona was building their high school with all the glass, there was concern about security of the building and that sort of thing. So is that going to be just a regular glass? Is that going to be a specialized glass? How, the, how, the, how does that affect school safety? So Verona's set up a little bit different on the interior. This um, this school's set up a bit closer to your Wanaki Intermediate School, where there is a, a... The SLC, the small learning communities, don't have any glass out to the corridor. Um, but then the exterior glass is... Um, set up similar with a laminated glass to add a, the additional layer of protection. It has an extra film on it that we've talked about in some of our safety presentations. Well, That's why. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 
Budget? Ready for budget? <laughs> do you want me to navigate there or do you want to? I can <laughs> bring it up for you. Here. That's all you. Perfect. I would have tried to find the Packers score update. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk budget. My, my slide deck doesn't have as many pretty pictures as theirs, but um, some of this you've seen before, but I think it's just good to, to remind you in terms of there's a lot of different scopes and parts of the referendum project. So today we're obviously talking about the middle school as part of the $175 million referendum. There was $99,920,000 that was appropriated from a budget perspective to the middle school. This gives you an idea of what that number was based on, and that was back in June of 2022, so what's it like 16 months ago, something like that. Um, and that was based on, this was the conceptual site plan, and essentially some Excel spreadsheets with square footages, numbers of classrooms, et cetera. So as you just saw, somewhat similar to this, but quite a bit different in terms of shape and layout and everything else. Our process, uh, very similar to what we presented to you previously. We quantify everything within the building. This shows you an aerial of the roof. This shows you a bunch of the elevations and the different colors represent the different materials that Mike just went through. We also have a preliminary project description. So that's a narrative that says, these things aren't designed yet, but here's the basis of design as to what we think those are. Uh, we also use the current heritage project in terms of basis of design. So for things like exterior walls, wall sections, mechanical systems, a lot of those that have been defined in heritage that are gonna be similar systems here. Although it's a different age group and different school, a lot of those systems are gonna be consistent throughout. So we're able to use that information as well. And then in this scenario, we spent about six weeks with uh, both EUA and the district, just really going through all the budget line items and making sure we had this, this project still targeted within the budget and we're making decisions in terms of cost-effective design. So some of those examples could be the, um, the clear story that Mike referenced quite a bit. Initially, we looked at that being a skylight. We came back with about, I think, four different options for the district administration team in terms of here's the four options, here's the cost associated and the life cycle cost, and we're able to make a decision to save money there. Uh, we looked at finishes throughout the facility and just made sure we stayed consistent with all the other uh, buildings within the district. Ultimately, that process resulted in bringing about three million total savings to the project, which as you'll see in the, the following slides, ultimately helped build up the contingency amount that we want to be having at this point in design because it is still fairly early in the design process. Uh, a couple other things we did as part of that we identified some scopes that could be listed as alternates. So what that means is they'll continue to be designed, but when we actually put this out and get hard bids from the, the marketplace, they'll be alternate bids. So we'll know exactly what those will cost, and then at that time, we can make a decision whether those get pulled into the project now, whether maybe we wait a little bit until we get further along with construction or what we do with those alternates. The other thing that we did work on was developing the list of district purchased equipment. You know, that's really technology, maintenance, appliances, specialized equipment. That's outside of your typical furniture fixtures and, and items that are um, gonna be procured through Atmosphere, you've selected as a furniture vendor. And Robin and myself and Steve have been really working through and John, you know, what that list needs to look like. Uh, we've appropriated some monies there, and there's um, ultimately going to be likely some more contingency that'll shift to that, which is similar to the approach we took from here. Each. Once we get further along in design, and really understand what some of those pieces are going to be. <clears throat> Here's just some building parameters in terms of size. The height does range 34 to 40 feet, depending on where you're at. Uh, 2,600 feet around the perimeter. Right now, we're looking at about 22 months for construction. Uh, just a little bit more in terms of construction. Obviously, once Heritage is school year is done this year, there's going to be a couple week period where we're getting stuff out of that building that's going to be salvaged, and we're working with John and the district to figure out what exactly that is. Then there's some abatement that'll happen in that space, and then following that, that building will start to get torn down. Right now, we're planning to work from the south end of that site to the north which gives us the ability to then start construction on that south side outside of the existing heritage footprint to 
really take advantage of the warm weather for a lot of those kind of creative early activities that we'd like to get done before it gets cold. So, you know, that building will open up in the fall of 26, so based on 22 months and starting, let's say, late January or late June, early July, that puts us in a really good spot. So here's the updated budget. Again, this is based on a site plan. Here's the floor plans. A lot of you know, everything you've just seen presented from EUA. So again, total project target still of that 99920000. Right now, the constructions um, about 83 million 280. We have 8 million in contingency, and then about 8.64 million in soft costs. To give you a feel, just in terms of um, that contingency <coughs> amount and how that compares. Next slide. When we went through this same process with the Heritage Project at uh, this SD budget, we were um, carrying approximately 9% contingency at that point, which is what we are currently um, sitting at for the middle school as well. Now, I'll tell you that Heritage had the advantage of just happening earlier. You know, right now, this project won't start until two years after that June budget, and we won't be finished until about two more years after that, right? So, um, you know, if you really look at it, we were setting the June budget, knowing that there'd still be work on site four years from that. And so, um, you know, we appropriate monies for escalation, which we've, we've already been able to um, help, you know, absorb some of the escalation. It's gone up about 5% in terms of escalation since June of 22. And we've also been able to build in our numbers what labor escalation is going to look like for the next three years. Because a lot of the union agreements were settled last June, and they typically will settle for three-year periods. So we now know what that labor escalation amount is. So the only risk really is on the materials side in terms of that. But we will be taking this um, project to the marketplace. Um, we're targeting February, March-ish in terms of when the final docs will be done. So that'll give us the ability to get out to the marketplace within the next six months, um, and really lock in those prices. And get some that was it. So one of the things we uh, talked about is uh, you, know, you come up with a budget, yep. uh, and you know, how do we know that that's a good a good number, right? Uh, you know, you talk about like the uh, University Research Park. You know, what what are the square footage costs of those as compared to something like this that we're building? Because they've got systems and things like that, probably more exotic than what we've got. You know, you know. So it just yeah. it, it'd be interesting to understand. You know, where do we, you know, as a school district, compare to you know, something. Yeah, so just to give you an idea right now, I think we're about $360 a square foot um, on middle school, Jack. Um, we're just, we actually just turned over 140,000 square foot science facility at EUA, it was a design partner on that, Verona. And that's in the $700 square footage range. Um, so compared to like a science facility that has pretty high tech mechanicals, you're, you know, a little more than half. In terms of first square foot, um, you know, I think Heritage is a good example. You know, that's been out to bid, and everything's, you know, hard numbers there in terms of what the marketplace is saying construction is worth. And then you get Heritage for about 349 a square foot. I'm researching it correctly. So, from our perspective, compared to the other types of work we do, things look in line with what we would expect. Yeah. yeah, the EUA and Vogel team's been great to work with. When we first kind of took off from the from the design to the costing piece, as Jay said, we had to find about three million dollars that we wanted to to get to where we felt the numbers were comfortable for us moving forward. And I don't feel we gave up really anything from an instructional standpoint. I think we were able to really have some great conversations about just different ways we could either organize it, design it, look at space, and look at materials, and it's been a really great collaborative effort. So I give a lot of credit to them, and they've worked really hard with us to try to meet some of our expectations. 
the pictures are beautiful. I mean, that will be such a, just a gorgeous building in our community. You did a really great job. Thank you. All right. I think we're moving Thank back you. to our committee. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very time. much. Yeah. <laughs> so back to the top of the agenda. There was one additional item on just an update on the superintendent search. I just would like to um, acknowledge in the community and thank the community for all of the input that they gave us in the superintendent profile that we are going to use as we pursue candidates. We had, um, I kind of went back to some numbers, we had 1,123 people respond to the survey and we had 98 people participate in focus groups. So again, I just want to thank the community for the input that helps us in profiling the leadership characteristics that we want. Um, just a little update on the next steps. Uh, actually, we are going to close applications on October 13th. Last I talked to our search firm, we had 20 plus applicants already. Um, and then we will be meeting with uh, P BWP again on the 23rd. I think we're going to set that meeting tonight for the 23rd to bring us their um, recommendations for who we should begin our interviews with, uh, five to seven people. And we will begin interviews on November 1st and 2nd. So, and all of this is always um, up to date on our website, and the profile is being loaded up on our website. So, and the results of the survey, I think, are fully there, correct, Andy? So, please keep up to date on the website. And, Brian, do you have anything to add? I don't. Okay. So, that's where we are with our superintendent search. Uh, moving on to committee reports, uh, curriculum committee. Yes, um, we had an update on the spring ministry data and Act 20. Um, we'll hear something more about Act 20 in the budget uh, portion of the meeting. And we had um, well, the building principals came and shared their building goals. Uh, it will. Uh, is it up on the site currently? Yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to show right now when, whenever you're finished, Mark. So. Yeah, one of the things I just wanted to show you is when I, we, we had a conversation about the building goals, and you can just show where on the site that is, um, Rebecca. So it's like kind of under our mission vision. In that area, we have our building goals underneath there. Then it's also included on each one of the sites for each of the individual <laughs> school buildings. So that's a piece that I think that was articulated that we talked about this summer of wanting to be more um, transparent with regards to where some of our focus areas are. So that's the piece that we just wanted to illustrate that that's where those are located. And those are the documents that are up. As I was walking through some of the schools um, this week, um, you've you've seen you can see them posted at different parts of the building. Saw them at, at um, Prairie Elementary today. I know that Tim and Amy have put them in the back boardroom as well. So those are things that are, are visible and just being more uh, more out there. So that's all I wanted to illustrate. Great. I have a question here. Uh, we get the uh, goals. Uh, are you measuring those like on a quarterly basis? Or are you you know, how do you, how do you know you're achieving that? Right. Because if you don't measure it, you don't. Know. Absolutely. I mean, all of those goals have different measurable pieces to it. I mean, the one thing about our work is not everything is a quarterly measurement. Some of those are on an annual basis. You'll see that particularly with some of the things that we have as a district goals. But certainly that there's progress monitoring aspects that are going on where, our, where we're working with our staff to see how we are progressing throughout the year. Those aren't necessarily markers that come to this entity, but they're things that our principals are working on as, as they start to um, illustrate where those pieces are. So, I mean, some of those are tied to assessments or some level of, of other data pieces that we have to gather. Um, and those aren't things that you gather on a daily basis, but at different increments throughout the year. So absolutely, they're part of those measurement pieces. That will be part of our um, accountability piece. And then at the end of the year, looking back at how they filter into our larger district goals. Um, like a, uh, Kurt, 
the uh, post the measurements on the website yeah. as well? We do our, our high-level measurements, so like when you see like our student achievement report that will be coming um, in, in a subsequent meeting, those items are all up on our website when you go into the curriculum area, so you see all of those different metrics. Yeah, I encourage you to take a look at them. Uh, I thought all the principals and their staff came up with a very focused academic goal that tied in with our district academic goals for reaching the three pandemic achievement scores. And then each of them had their own so nuance for their own buildings, uh, what kind of student growth kind of things, uh, student wellness that they thought was their highest priority. So each building has a little different take on that, but uh, a very comprehensive look. Yeah, so the, com so, the committee heard from each of the principals, so if you want to see that in a more depth, you can go watch the, the curriculum committee in that video, because they did a, all the principals were there to present this in, in, in more detail. Thank you. Um, moving on to the facility committee, um, we have a couple things in that committee that we need to take action on. Starting with the decision on the solar system at the Heritage Elementary, we kind of looked at this over the course of the last two meetings, looking at three different options, and they were in the board book. Um, after much discussion and a recommendation, we did choose the smallest of the options, but included infrastructure, so if we have money available at the end of our projects, we can add more panels without additional substructure costs. So we chose the smaller one to begin with and the upgrade of the infrastructure. So um, it did pass the facility on a 3-0 and we do need a motion. Randy, do you want to add anything? Yeah, the only thing I just want to reiterate is it is that 151 kilowatt system. It's also the, about $10,000 to add the infrastructure to build onto it. And as Steve and I have had a conversation, we'll also will pursue any of the available energy grants with regards to the solar as well. So that'll help offset costs if we can secure some of those. But we would be looking for a motion and approval of this this evening. Motion. So, so move two for the solar. Second. Any questions on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Um, the second thing is at the middle school, there was a need that was brought forward to put really a doorway between a special ed classroom and some bathroom facilities. And um, after, I mean, it, it is a need that we have currently for a student that we have there. Um, we will try to include or get that project done during a break, either Christmas or sometime. Um, anyway, uh, if you have any questions, I know Tiffany is here. She had worked on that. And Randy. Just to add a couple of things. This will be utilizing referendum funds for, for that project. It's really, I think I appreciate Tiffany bringing it forward as just a need for our special ed students and some of our kids who are who have some toiletry needs and being able to kind of respect the privacy as they go through that. Question that was asked at the committee level was how will this room play into any future use of the middle school? And we feel that it will absolutely be applicable at this point and in the, into the future. Um, and the project is right now scheduled to be completed somewhere around winter break. So, motion to approve. Second. Um, any questions on that? All in favor say aye. 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 And the last item that we need approval on from the facility is fundraising request from our softball booster group to kind of collaborate with the school on some of the new facilities and upgrades that we want to do with our softball field, switching from our varsity to our junior varsity location. Um, and they we're very um, willing to partner and have some great ideas, and we are just approving some of their fundraising ideas. Yeah, so this is just um, in complement to the, the work that we're doing around the softball field. One of the conversations that we had at the committee was how we would partner with the Booster Club. Nick, our, our AD, has met with the Booster Club, talked about really how that process might, might look. They brought forward some ideas as far as where they could contribute and some ideas for fundraising. So 
per our policy, this is just really approving them to continue to raise funds to self support the work at the softball field. So we would look for um, the board's um, consideration of that tonight. So if possible, a motion to approve that fundraising. Motion to approve the fundraising for the softball efforts. Second. Second. Um, any questions on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Thank you. And that's the end of our facility committee. Next is our budget committee. Um, Jack and Allie. Yeah, one of the things we talked about is uh, reviewing the uh, tax levy for uh, 2023 and uh, discuss strategies of how to uh, use the uh, funds that uh, Allie has found. I'll turn it over to uh, Allie to uh, bring the rest of you up to date. Sure. All yours, Allie. So in this year's state budget, there was additional funding, um, significant funding for tax, school tax levy credits. Um, we are fortunate enough to be able to use those credits to our advantage and levy an additional $1.9 million in our Fund 39 tax levy. Um, we did have a recommendation from the Budget Committee to go forward um, with that. I should mention that the tax levy that we present next week at the annual meeting will be the um, tax levy that was shown and approved in the third draft of the budget. However, when we bring the fourth draft of the budget um, and have the meeting to set the tax levy, the tax levy would include that additional $1.9 in Fund 39. Um, we did find out, however, last week that um, the equalized property value for the district went up over 16%. It went up over $600 million. So regardless of us levying that $1.9 million, the tax rate will still drop to about $9 or even less compared to the $9.69 that it was last year. So one of the things that uh, we were trying to do is uh, look at how do we keep the uh, tax that you pay similar year over year. Uh, and that's that's what the whole goal of what we're trying to do here uh, is not to have big spikes up and down. Uh, so so that's why we talked about uh, using this uh, tax credit and uh, putting it into our fund 39 so that we could maintain you know that consistency of payment tax payment. So this is not an item we need any yeah. action on tonight. It's not something you'll see at the annual meeting, even though, even though we can talk about some of the concepts around it. This will come at the meeting where we set the tax levy in two weeks. So that will be the piece that Steve and Allie will walk through that. And one of the things we'll be looking for is um, the consideration of, of the board as you vote on the final tax levy. But it fits in very much into what Jack is saying is the tax rate consistency and looking at how we can kind of prevent this big spikes and valleys in the tax rate. Now, as Ali has also shared, with the um, equalized value of our district going up, there's going to be a, a drop in that tax rate over time. So if you remember, if you look back on the charts that Steve and Ali have used in the past, and we were at like $10.89, is that about right? Yeah. yeah. And then this is going to drop us actually below 9 Even with the work that you're trying to do with the um, the tax credits, but with the valuation is going to continue to lower that tax rate. Now the piece we're looking at is how do we help keep the what you're paying as a, as a homeowner relatively consistent. That's going to be based off of where you are in that assessment cycle. So, tonight's really more just information that this is a thing that's continued to go uh, that we've been looking at. We had a pretty long discussion about that at the budget committee. Um, I would say that if there are things that you have questions about, because it is a very complicated thing, two things. Potentially watch what, what was discussed at the Budget Committee. Also, just contact us. We'll be happy to have Allie and Steve. We'll be happy to sit down one-on-one -on -one and just explain all of these pieces. We've done that with a few people just to kind of get a sense of where that is. But it's a very complicated technical piece as part of school finance. But we'd like to bring it forward at the levy setting meeting. Um, and we'll obviously go through that in more depth. But if you have questions, please reach out to us and we'll help walk through it. Anything to add there, Allie, or any questions from the board members? 
But there's one more budget. And then we uh, talked about the uh, Act 20 uh, training. Why don't you uh, take that? As well. I'll take that one. Okay. Um, so the Act 20 piece, I asked it is to be brought here. It's not an action item, but Amy Johnson's done a nice job really looking at um, how do we put forth you know, the financial side of supporting the work that goes into the changes around the reading curriculum that have been put forth in legislation. So Rebecca, can I just have you pull that, pull Amy's sheet up? There's, there's no action needed on this because there's funds within the curriculum department and their carryover to um, pay for this work. But we do have a considerable amount of, of work we need to do with our, with our staff, um, specified trainings that there are costs associated with. So what Amy has projected out here, is what I believe is probably a worst case scenario as far as the dollars associated with this endeavor, is about $108,000. Um, when we start to look at you know, requirements that come out of the state, I mean, you look at things of where the funding goes, there's definitely funding behind this, but it's not money that's coming to us to support this part of the work. It supports other parts of the project um, and which may or may not impact us. But the first part of it is, is really trying to get ahead of the professional development aspect of it, which I think Amy's put together a nice plan here to do so. She's looking to do most of that this school year because we also want to make sure that we stay on cycle with some of the other work that she has planned for math implementation in the year, which will be coming in the following year. So trying to, to book into that with the training for the reading initiatives this year and then being able to continue with math in the 24-25 school year. So I think she's done a really nice job looking at all of the options, vetting it out with um, our admin and has started the communication with staff as far as how this will look. So this is more just an informational item. If you have more specific questions, Amy is here and she can, can answer them in more detail. But I just wanted to make sure you had your eyes on it so you can see that there is an expenditure that comes with these type of mandates that we need to find and our curriculum department's done a nice job to do that. The other piece, and I believe it was a, con a question at the curriculum committee was, if we have other needs financially um, for other curricular initiatives, this right now does not impact that. But if it does, um, we will bring those things forward to you for consideration. So, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Super. Um, and uh, I think we're down to the last committee, the DEI committee. Um, in the DEI committee, we reviewed the uh, disproportionality plan and the DEI plan over the course of three years rather than a one and done because the, there's going to be a continuing effort to try to make our goals. Um, there are three quantitative goals that were identified in the disproportionality plan that were overarching. Smaller efforts, of course, fall under those three primary goals. Um, and then we also reviewed uh, providing a little bit of structure to our student listening sessions in the future um, to make them more productive, um, provide less disruption, and just kind of clarify uh, the expectations of both the students and the board members going into those. So there's going to be suggestions coming forward from Randy and Tim on what that agenda might look like, and um, we'll have further discussion about those elements of structure. Thanks. Thank you, Don. Um, and moving on to the administrative part, we've had our middle school. So we have our third Friday count. That's Allie. Allie? Yeah. <coughs> so third Friday count was on September 15th. Um, we did have a decrease in our student count this year. It was 44-23 last September. Uh, or we had 44-23 in the budget. It was 44-14 last September. Um, however, the numbers came in at 44.06 this September. Um, the document there shows um, account by school, and overall the financial impact is less than $25,000 for those students that we thought would be here. Thank you. Um, we have some National Merit Scholar students to recognize. Yeah, I think we have about 10 students that we're recognizing. So in your packet, you will see the list of our National Merit um, Scholarship um, semifinalists. Um, that's just a really exciting piece for our, for our students. 
Um, Rebecca, if you just want to pull that up so we can at least recognize who the students are. Um, you can see the students' names up here in front, but they've just done a great job, and that's a very um, prestigious um, honor for them to be at that level of recognition. So we'll, they'll continue on through the process, and then we always recognize those students as we go into graduation as well. Thank you, and congratulations to those students. Um, we are down to consent agenda. Uh, you can pull anything out, take it all as one option. While you think about that, I want to just recognize our donations this month. We again have our Pride Pump donation, another $1,000 from the Mefford family. Um, always greatly appreciated. We also have a donation from Kurt and Peggy Brunig um, for a Harry Voss Memorial who passed away this um, about a month ago. Harry Voss was involved in our IT department uh, for many years. And we uh, always appreciate any of those donations. So anybody want to discuss anything or pull anything out before we vote on consent? If not, I'd be looking motion for a motion. To Second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Perfect. Thank you. So we are ready to any board correspondence other no, than what we've, we've done? I think we've, we've touched on all of that. Okay. So we're ready to look at agendas. So we do want to um, redo that special meeting for our BWP. Removing that on the 16th and putting that after our levy meeting on the 23rd. So we do need a motion for that. Do you want that all to be the same meeting? Because annual meeting's a whole different, as we were gonna back it up to the annual meeting. That has its own requirements for an agenda. That's why we had two meetings. What we could do is just have this as part of the meeting where we're setting the levy, so it's just oh. one meeting. Okay. So we could just post it that way. So this is all closed sessions. So my suggestion right. would be tax levy first, Correct. and then Correct. closed session. Right. But we can just uh, let's just articulate. Let's just vote okay. on it again. Do you want the Do you want the tax levy meeting starting at five? We have started at five thirty. So we'll yes. start that at five thirty. Yes. Our agenda items will be setting the tax levy and any of the pieces that are associated with the work that Ellie, you, and Steve have to bring forward, and then we'll go into closed session for you to do the work with BWP. Correct. Motion to approve the change. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Perfect. Thank you. Okay. There are a few committee meetings that we could do. I mean, I think what our challenge is going to be is finding time when it syncs up for us to do them, given you know the work that the board has. So let me just kind of talk through them, and then you can give me some feedback on what, what you'd like to do. Um, Co-curricular committee it does need to meet at some point here. Um, I would anticipate we either have two meetings here kind of in like that November, December time frame, or we could just we could just wait till all the fall sports are done and then meet right after that. So we can do a meeting kind of in late October, and no, sometime in November, and then up time in December, or we can just do one in December. It's up to the board kind of more of what your schedule is, because you have a lot moving really between now and Thanksgiving time. So do you want to have an emergency, so I would say one. Okay. Let's do one, is that fine? And we can, okay. is there some things I know that the board has asked for us to bring back? There are some new clubs and org things that we have to just sort through, mm -hmm. and then we would have kind of the fall report and how all well those school curriculars are. Okay. So we could do that at the December meeting. So okay. put, does that work for everybody? Yeah. All right, well, this, we can set that at a subsequent meeting then. Policy committee, it's a very similar conversation. Right now we're working through the 400 policies that we've gotten another batch in from the School Board Association that we're working with our admin on. Um, that one's kind of how many policies you want to digest as a full board all at once, because we can break that into a kind of a smaller period and have a meeting between now and our November board meeting, where we could probably take 15 of those policies 
um, or we can postpone that and we just bring a larger batch in the future. To me, it always has to do with the, the scope of that policy, right? At some point, Correct. it's not the number, it's what, what's in it. So, yeah. And I can't tell. Yeah, the last group we had, had had a number of them that were wanted to keep our current policy, but we are reviewing the current policies then to make sure that they still fit our needs. So there's some, there's a quite a bit of work on our end yet, but I don't want to all of a sudden bring 35, 40 policies for you in one night. That seems like a lot. Yeah. So it probably to me it makes sense for us to at least find a time if we could to have a policy meeting here before November so we can at least chunk that out. So if we look at November for I think some of those were, I just don't know if we're going to have, because you're doing interviews, which days? Uh, uh, first, first and second, and then the week uh, of, of the 6th. The the right, and I guess that's the question more for, for all of you than well, for me. The policy committee comes it to meet in the morning. In the morning, but okay. you may but have. With knowing you have those interviews in the evening. Yeah. That okay with you, or how would you like to do that? Yes, yeah, so the policy would be Ted, Judy, and Jack. Mm -hmm. I would recommend a morning meeting. Okay. What about um, November first? I mean, that whole week of from. October 30th, 31st, well, we have a meeting. Uh, I can I do can any of those mornings. Is there a day that works better that week, Ted? That's fine, first. First? So okay. 7 7.30 30 yeah, meeting here. for policy. Does that work for Jack? Yeah. That it's works. That works for you? Okay. Um, we'll do that in December. It's kind of the same question for DEI, Don. I mean, I think we can meet or we can postpone it, whichever you oh. prefer. Um, we were talking about having the next one in that first week of December sometime. Yeah. It's like the 4th, 5th, or 6th. Review yep. guidelines around meeting with students and any kind of progress right. as the um, uh, staff, yep. DEI committees, begin yep. to meet. Yep. Is there a time in there that works better for you, Don, that we can start with? Um, well, I would prefer in the evenings for DEI to allow yep. for public attendance. <laughs> yeah. And I can't do Wednesday. I've got another meeting that night, but so I could do fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth, or I, fine. I can't do the fifth. Uh, fourth. 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 <laughs> fourth. Okay. I'm looking at Tiffany and Tim as well. What about the seventh? Can we do seventh Thursday? of November? Of December. 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 Can we do the Thursday? The seventh. Yep. Thursday night. That worked for all of you in December? Okay. Yep. What uh, time? I prefer 5.30. That's fine. We can do 5.30 on the 7th. Perfect. You don't need budget. But. Unless the committee thinks it's necessary, but it would have to be probably the morning of. Right. I think we should be okay. Green. And facilities, if we, I think we're okay right now, but if we need something, I can call that. Any other committees on the HR, we're good. Curriculum's already set. I think we're good. Okay. So, I think we are done before 8.30. So, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you all.